And in business, President Mohamed Buhari, uh, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari, has again requested for external loans of $29.96 billion as presented to the Senate. According to him, the request is aimed at funding what he has described as key infrastructural projects across the country. Uh, now the letter was read at plenary on Thursday by the President of the Senate, Senator Ahmed Lawan. Recall that the eight Senate under the leadership of Senator Bukola Saraki had in November 6, 2016 rejected a similar request when the president wrote the Senate seeking for approval of the loan. Uh, live with me, joining me right now in the studio is Taiwo Oyedele. He is the fiscal policy partner and West Africa leader at PricewaterhouseCoopers. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Uh, regarding the president's request for the loan of about $30 billion, would you suggest that this is the right time for it? We understand that currently our external debt ratio is within uh, about 22.89 trillion naira. And then we also have the issue where, where you talk about the debt service to government revenue, it's within about 58%. So is this the right time for such a loan request? I think the focus should be more on why do we need to borrow? Um, so if government is borrowing for the purpose of capital development, um, you're trying to provide electricity, you're trying to provide rail. Yeah. So depending on what we are borrowing for, if we are borrowing for capital project that will pay themselves back, both in terms of debt service as well as principal repayment, mm -hmm. then that is a good thing to do anytime. But if we are borrowing and, and some of it we go into recurrent expenditure, then it costs, call, it costs for a lot of concerns because that means that our debt service ratio to revenue is going to get even worse. In a way, Nigeria does not have a debt crisis. If you look at our debt to GDP ratio, the major worry is the revenue profile. So which is why, you know, part of what I expect the National Assembly to do is to ask for a detailed plan. We need to know every single project mm -hmm. that we intend to spend this money on. Where is it located? How much would it cost us? When will we start the project? When are we going to complete it? What will be the impact assessment on the people? Um, if we have all these questions answered, I think I will be less worried. If not, then everybody should be worried. But moving forward, what is the potential impact of such a loan on the country as a whole? Yeah, so, so again, Nigeria needs to spend some estimate, have it, that we need to spend about $100 billion every year mm -hmm. for the next 30 years to bring our infrastructure to the level where it should be. So if you're trying to borrow $30 billion, it's not going to be very significant. Plus, you need to ensure that in trying to execute those projects, uh, you cut out corruption, and inefficiency and wastage. Otherwise, you may find that you are borrowing $30 billion, but it's more than half of it is going into individual pockets. If you have all of those covered, and part of the ways to do that is to get private sector involved, I will expect those projects to be PPPs, private-public partnership, uh, to execute them, with control being in the hand of, of the private sector. And government should provide oversight and regulation and then Nigerians should receive information about detailed analysis. There should be 100% transparency, accountability for all of us to monitor what we're doing with that. Because really, when you borrow such amount of money, it's really borrowing from um, official Nigerians mm -hmm. to spend now. So it has to be that what we're spending the money on is something they will come and inherit, not to pay salaries and pay allowances and overhead. Another important factor is the terms of those loans. Okay. If you get a loan where you don't have to make repayments in the next few years, and you also don't have very high interest rates, and you also don't give them unnecessary tax break, because there are people around the world who are investing at zero percent. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have over $17 trillion of investable fund around the world attracting either zero percent or negative returns. So if we fix our environment and the economic space, the private sector can even bring this money we're trying to borrow. So you suggest that moving forward in the future, we may just have the ideal market for investors to come in and issues about the kind of loans or the value of loans that we're borrowing wouldn't be a problem anymore. That's correct, because if you look at it, a lot of the uh, infrastructural projects we need to develop are commercially viable. If you are talking about real, 
electricity, major roads. Government does not even need to borrow to fix that. If you create the right environment, private sector will bring their money, invest, build world-class infrastructure, and make money from it, which is good for the economy. So we need to try and focus our limited resources on the areas of social infrastructure plus human capital development and let the private sector drive the rest of it, especially for those that are commercially viable. All right, thank you very much. Because of time, that's all we can have right now. But thank you thank very you much for joining us in the me. studio. And that's our news roundoff of events at this hour. For more news updates, please follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. We'll be back later with more stories making the headlines. Do join us again.